Good morning Amherst. Welcome to part two of our unit, kinetics. The unit's thermodynamics, kinetics, and equilibrium. These are chemical kinetics. They refer to the rate of reaction. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do today is, this is a, a lesson that uh, is notes. So these are things you either want to memorize or write down somewhere so you remember them, but factors that can affect the rate of a reaction and why, how they affect it and why they affect it. Okay, so how do you in increase the rate of a reaction? That's a basic question here. Increase or decrease, you usually think of it in terms of increasing. Well, in order for a reaction to occur, particles have to collide. So if you can increase the total number of collisions between particles, you can increase the reaction rate. You can also increase the total number of collisions that are quote unquote effective. Not every collision is going to work. If you think of uh, collisions between particles, uh, if you're smashing a couple eggs together, you're going to make some scrambled eggs. If you just tap the eggs together, there's probably not enough energy there to break the shell. Whereas if you smack them hard, okay, you've got enough energy to get the reaction going. The other thing that needs to happen is the particles need to have proper orientation. Are you guys getting like telemarketed scanned like this all the time too? Because I get a phone call about every 10 minutes. For a collision to be effective, it's got to have proper energy. It's not just enough energy, it can't be too much. It's like, you know, the uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You know, this one's too big, this one's too small, this one's just right. So it's got to have the proper amount of energy, but it's also got to have proper orientation. If we go back to our analogy on eggs, if the eggs are moving fast enough, but they, they just barely sideswipe each other, they're not going to collide very well. They're not going to break the eggs. You might have a little uh, scratch on the side. So these are the two factors. Okay, increase the amount of energy or give it the right amount of energy and give it uh, proper orientation. So the first factor that affects the rate of a reaction is temperature. Now temperature works as a twofer. So a lot of times on a regents exam, which are canceled by the way, um, they'll ask you to state a relationship and other times they'll ask you to explain it. So if they ask you to state something, you say, as temperature increases, the rate of reaction increases. That's not saying why, that's just stating the, the relationship. If they say why, if they say explain, you get because in your answer. Temperature is average kinetic energy. As temperature increases, particles are moving faster on average. So when they hit, they hit harder. They've got more energy. They're more likely to be effective. And just by moving faster, you're creating more collisions. You get more collisions and a greater percentage of them that are likely to be affected. effective. That's a win-win scenario. If your temperature goes up, your rate of reaction goes up. Second factor, pressure. But pressure can only affect gases, so very much like our solubility from the last unit. If you're talking about pressure, you're referring to gases. State it. As pressure increases, the reaction rate increases. Explain it. When you think of pressure, think of external pressure. Think of squishing the particles together. If you force the particles closer together, what are they gonna do? They're gonna collide more often. You get more collisions. If you have more collisions, you have a faster rate of reaction. Next factor, surface area. Well, this would not be for gases. You can't increase the surface area of a gas. The idea of uh, ideal gas is that there's great space in between the particles. Every particle is at the surface. So pressure is for gases only, surface area is not for gases. State the relationship. As surface area increases, the rate of reaction increases. Why? Only particles that are at the surface are able to collide. If a particle can't collide, it can't react. Think of dissol dissolving a cube of sugar into, say, you know, a cup of tea. Or the same amount of sugar in granulated form. Which one's going to dissolve faster? Well, the spoonful of granulated sugar. Tungsten is very needy today. So here's a cube of sugar. The interior particles, they can't get to the water, or the water can't get to them, until the exterior particles dissolve away. But in granulated sugar, many more of the particles are able to contact the water immediately, so it's going to dissolve faster. So if the particles aren't at the surface, they can't collide. Concentration of reactants. 
brackets, we're going to be using this a lot for this part of the unit. The brackets, that means molarity, moles per liter. State the relationship. As the concentration of the reactants increases, the reaction rate increases. Why? You have more reactant particles, so you have more collisions. Just having more particles gives you more collisions, gives you a faster rate of reaction. Number five, add a catalyst. If you add a catalyst, you increase the rate of a reaction. Because, and here's the important one, this is even um, spelled out pretty clearly in, in the region stuff. A catalyst changes the reaction mechanism in such a way that an alternate pathway, come here, come here, come here. An alternate pathway between reactants and products is formed. That alternate pathway has a lower activation energy. You see what I deal with, right? Come here. So, if you're looking at your potential energy diagram, in blue, here's the reaction without a catalyst. In red, this is the reaction pathway with a catalyst. You can see the activation energy went from fairly large to much lower. So, when you add a catalyst, you're not changing the number of collisions per se, but you're changing the percentage of them that are effective. If you picture our classroom and you picture the front desk at the front of the room, there is a percentage of people in the class that can probably just standing there just jump up on top of it. Most of us won't be able to do that. I can't do that. Well, think of the catalyst as something that lowers the height of that desk. If you take your chainsaw and you cut that desk down so it's only like, you know, six, eight inches tall, I think most of us would be able to hop up on that. So if this is the height of the desk, after your chainsaw incident, now this is the height of the desk. More of us can jump up there. A greater percentage of the people in the class will be able to get over the hill. All right, number six, nature of the reactant. Well, some substances, they're just more active than others. Um, you can achieve a similar reaction with a different substance. So if I take an iron nail and I throw it into water, over time it's gonna rust. It's gonna oxidize. Take the same mass of something like sodium, Boom, it explodes on contact. Some things are just more reactive than other, others. Last thing for today is going to be agitation. Kind of like the phone calls and the kitty cat have got me agitated. <laughs> Basically, stir it up. If you stir it up, create more collisions. More collisions means you create a faster rate of reaction. Okay, these are things you need to commit to memory. As part of our test, I'll ask you to state and explain. Um, there'll be some interesting questions you'll see on that, how um, you'll be given a scenario and they'll say, identify two other factors that could increase the rate of reaction. So you have to kind of consider which ones they've got, what's applicable and what's not. Um, this is the easiest part of this unit. So commit these to memory please. Look for another video soon.